Okay, boys and girls, today we are taking a comprehensive look at my personal survival kit. We're going to be breaking down the PSK, the philosophy, and breaking down this whole kit to explain everything that is in it. Now, the primary reason we're going to be doing this is because this should be the last look at the PSK and its final iteration for a long while. So, to start off, we're actually not going to be talking about the PSK, but the tool set and mindset that goes into it. So, essentially, the PSK was always designed in my mind to be a kit that could be carried on body that would effectively allow you to have essentially a survival fail safe should you ever get separated from your backpack or from a vehicle or from any large portion of your camping uh, or wilderness bushcrafting setup. So obviously it's always optimal to have something like a backpack or to live out of a vehicle or some larger area that you could have more supplies. However, obviously you can't take that truck everywhere. You can't take that backpack everywhere. You may leave it behind just to go to the bathroom or to explore a new area. And in those processes, you can get turned around, get lost, and need survival equipment. So the PSK was basically my answer to having a survival or the essential survival items on body at all times. It's not a perfect solution, but it's the best solution I could come up with so far. So that is the premise of the PSK. Now these other tools that you see on the table are, are what I would consider the necessary operating tools for this kit. Like I said, this kit isn't perfect and the multiple times I've talked about this kit, people will make remarks about why is there no knives? Why is there no this or that inside this kit? And the reason why is because I'm a firm believer of having tools that work. And so I could put certainly knives in this kit and earlier generations of the PSK actually did have knives, but I came to the realization that any knife that I could put in this small of a kit would not be an effective knife for me. And that got me thinking about other tools. So I devised three simple tools that at least with the clothing that I regularly wear can always be carried on body just like the PSK. So the essential necessary operating tools for my PSK are going to be a hatchet, a medium sized saw, and a saw a camp knife or bushcrafting knife. Now in this case for these particular tools, so this one is a Silky Gomboy Curved Teeth 210 and this one is essentially just a really good general purpose saw. Now the hatchet I have here of course is my good old uh, GBA Wildlife Hatchet, though there are a number of hatchets that would work. I just really like the Wildlife Hatchet. I think it does a great job but any hatchet in particular is good. And then of course I have my JBK Layman as the primary knife, just to give you guys a nice look at some cool tools. But essentially the idea is you would have all three of these tools and those, knife, or those tools build off or cover the weaknesses in this kit. Because like I said, this kit does not have cutlery, but I really did not want to sacrifice functionality. So this is the kit. I'm going to break it down in its entirety and to talk about each component. But before I do that, this actual kit itself is the Maxpedition Janus Pocket Extension. You can still get these, I believe, but this is really the easiest way to carry a robust survival kit. And I found that the Maxpedition Janus Pocket Extension is, at least for me, the largest kit that I find myself routinely wanting to carry. We're gonna start with the exterior of the Janus. Now, the things that you noticed on the outside, or you probably didn't notice this one, but this one is stored in this little uh, pocket right here. But these are the two externally stored items. Now, the first one that you guys saw was a personal locator beacon. Now, this one is made by the company ACR. This is a Rescue Link 400. And this thing, like I said, is a personal locator beacon. So when in doubt, you flip this antenna up, hit the button that is behind this protector, and essentially it sends a signal to, or an SOS signal, to any uh, search and rescue crews and helps them find you. So I have this set up on this 
piece of paracord here. This is the paracord that lashes it to that. It, it is set up for quick release, but is pretty sturdy. So that is the PLB. The next one to that is a small micro med kit. Now I won't get into this because I do have other videos detailing this specific kit, but it's just essentially a home brewed small med kit that has different types of, so it has antihistamines, it has painkillers, uh, essentially light duty stuff, bandages, nothing too crazy or fancy in this, but it is a helpful little kit that if you need anything in a type of emergency, it won't cover everything or the most extensive wounds, but it will help with little things. Okay, so now to the main compartment in the pack. So the main compartment actually has quite a few things that I include in it. And this is essentially what is carried in the main kind of cargo area. So to start off, we'll go over fire. So I've said in many different videos, I always carry three methods of fire in my PSK. The first of those is technically the uh, ferro rod. And you'll notice that, especially if you were looking at the beginning of the video, there was a little orange lanyard sticking out of the outside of the pouch. That was this orange lanyard. I, once again, similar to the PSK, always like to know where and that I have my ferro rod on me at all times. So this usually is sitting, or the lanyard usually sits on the outside. Obviously the ferro rod on the inside of the survival kit, but easily accessible and easily and readily available. So that's the ferro rod. Next to that, we have a lighter. This is a little peanut lighter. And this one I carry for the express reason that it is sealed. So this has an O-ring as you guys can see here. So it is waterproof and it also stores its uh, lighter fluid in it. So this does not evaporate. This is a sealed unit. And lastly, I have matches in two different forms. So I have this waterproof canister full of matches and I also have steel wool in here to act as a kind of buffer and barrier and as another alternative means for fire starting if I need to use batteries. And then I also carry uh, tight matches. And these guys, if you guys have seen any videos on them, are not even so much a match. They're almost truly a kind of amalgamation of a fire starter and an, an ignition source. So these things burn for, if I remember correctly, about three minutes. And so you can strike them, start them on fire, and they run for like three minutes. They're very good, uh, very nice. Now they are a little bit big and hard to carry, but I do have them in a plastic bag. And I don't so much have these in a plastic bag for their own protection because these are obviously waterproof matches. These tight matches are actually so waterproof that you can stick them in water, pull them back out, and they will reignite. So I'm not really concerned about the waterproofness, but I carry them in a plastic bag so that I can use the plastic bag for other purposes uh, for survival. So really the plastic bag is just there to double as one keeping these matches in one unit and also to uh, use for other survival purposes. So that's that and that kind of covers most of the fire stuff. I will talk a little bit more about fire in a little bit. So speaking of fire, there's also live fire here. Uh, this is the primary tinder that I have for the kit, though I do have other tinders. I just like live fire because it is reusable. So you can light little bits of live fire on fire and kind of, you know, dispense it and use it as need be. Now, this is not my favorite fire starter. Live fire is not the best in my opinion, but it is okay and it works in a pinch. And once again, it is reusable. And with with some things in this survival kit, they're not always strictly survival. So with this survival kit, you know, if I get like a little cut or nick, I have band-aids to help solve those problems. As you can see, this ferro rod, I do use it intermittently. Now I don't use the heck out of this fire or ferro rod because I want to preserve its life. But you know, when I need to start a fire, I, I use that ferro rod. And so same with the live fire, you know, this is more for less emergent reasons. Uh, for starting fires so that I don't have to go and use or burn up, you know, some of these tinder quicks per se. Okay, so moving over to the last, or some of the last stuff, I also carry one uh, mylar blanket, a kind of lighter, kind of smaller duty uh, mylar blanket or mylar, yeah, mylar blanket. 
and I also carry a larger, more heavy duty Mylar blanket in here. Now this is my bandana wrap, and essentially this is just a cotton bandana, and on the inside, as you guys can see there, there is a thicker, larger, uh, mylar blanket wrapped up in there and I do this for a couple reasons one I like having the extras so this is three rubber bands a bandana and a mylar blanket all in one kind of unit but in addition to that if you guys are familiar with mylar blankets you'll know that even thicker mylar blankets are damaged reasonably easy by things like metal wire things like ferro rods will damage these things reasonably easy so it's nice to protect your mylar blankets and how I do that is I just keep it wrapped up in a bandana like that so that protects the mylar blanket from getting damaged so like I said I have some snare wire some light metal wire there and I also have um, one one important component to my water purification system, and these are just little water tablets. Um, these are the best of the best, but for a system and a survival kit like this, this is about the best you can ask for for water purification or at least water cleaning. Okay, so the next to that, or next to the main kind of components for this kit are what's in these two side pockets. So the Janus is organized with two side pockets and we just went over the main compartment. So in my fire designated main compartment, this will usually be what I have. So I have my Fox 40 Howler, or this is the Micro, and so this thing, just a nice, small, very loud whistle, and Fox 40 makes professional whistles. They're very good at what they do, so I trust the Micro by Fox 40 quite a bit. Then, of course, next to that, I have four wet fires in varying degrees and levels of crushed, uh, but they do work even when crushed, uh, but these are just uh, different wet fires. And then I also have a handful of Tinder Quick tabs as they are running away from me to also use. So I prefer to use the Tinder Quicks. They're a little bit easier to start, a little bit better. But if you're dealing with wet conditions or wet circumstances, Tinder Quicks are ultimately cotton, so they're not the best to use in uh, in the in wet conditions so that's when you use obviously wet fire right so that is the kind of fire starting section of things and then on the other side or the other pocket we have food and water so this is the food and water kind of section now we have a couple of very crushed cliff bars here but once again similar to the crushed wet fire even if your cliff bars are heavily crushed like this they are still as nutritionally valuable the nutrition value doesn't change much even if the looks or appearance of them do these do not look super tasty but they uh they work and they fit. So those are a couple crushed cliff bars. I also have a handful of instant coffees. Uh, these are Starbucks Vias, I have about four of them here. And then I also have a, a piece of pretty thick aluminum foil. And so this, or tin foil as some might say, and this is really just for creating different types of either cups or different things for food or drinks such as coffee. So you can, you Use that or I can use that as I need. So lastly, talk about the elephant in the room now. For you more mature viewers, you will know that these are unlubed condoms and that they are specifically in this case for or in this survival case for water collection. And they are to be used in conjunction, obviously with the aforementioned water tabs. Now, condoms are pretty darn good for many things, obviously, but in the case of water collection, they're also pretty good because you can get around a liter of water into a condom. So there are four unlubed condoms here, and that is to cover the basis of water collection and purification pretty darn well. So. There's many ways here that you use water and to collect water and to treat the water. So that is the kind of last part of the whole survival kit pie. Now this covers bases, like I said, outside of 
cutting pretty darn well. And the primary reason why I focus on carrying things like a little bit of food and the ability to get water is in the first 72 hours, well, water actually is pretty important in 72 hours, but by and large, this is looking after the important pieces of life, things that are necessary, things like heat and shelter, building and acquisition. And in addition to that, also the more mental things, being able to stay as well fed as possible or even having a little bit of food can go a long way in making your mind more at ease with the survival situation. So this is just a look at the gear in my personal survival kit or PSK. So whenever you see this kit on my body or whenever you see it in videos on camera, you will know that this is the content that is in it. And uh, yeah, there's a good amount of stuff and this hasn't necessarily been a kit that was put up, or put together overnight. I've been working on this kit for many years and it has turned out just the way that I think that I want it, at least for now. Feel like I always say that and uh, then I end up changing it but this kit is pretty darn good and it covers my bases and just general survival bases of really wherever you would find yourself and what you're probably going to need and your focus is. Also as a slight editor's note just at the end of this video uh, there's also paracord carried in this kit. Totally forgot to mention but about anywhere from 10 to 6 feet of 550 paracord. So this should have been added to the whole roster, but this is rest assured in the top of this kit. So as always guys, God bless and now I'm officially out.